Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, let's talk about making the receptacle for your battery to build your own Ryobi tool. Um, first off, what is the receptacle? That's the plug-in right here. So if you take any Ryobi battery, you can plug it into any Ryobi tool and it will run. So the battery then will supply the power. But in order to use this battery, you have to have the receptacle. If you're going to make your own tools or your own toys and you want to run them off these batteries, this is the hard part, is making something easy that you can then plug batteries into them and unplug them easily. Now I have evolved over the years about making my own of that sort of thing and I can leave some links to some of the past ones where I did. I was using PVC and quarter inch 20 bolts that I would screw down and make the contact very it was a very difficult system but it worked and it got me started at making things using the Ryobi as my power source and it opened up a whole lot of things that I just enjoyed been doing that I've enjoyed doing with these batteries and thinking of new things anyway I have a new project that I'm working on that is a battery charger a 12 volt battery charger to charge Ryobi batteries but of course it's going to be an OTB charger so there's going to be some things here that I'll tell you about when we do that uh, for another time right now we want to talk about making this little receptacle so it's easy for you to build something to connect this battery be able to plug it in and use it let me give you a quick example and that will probably help here is a battery uh, a power outlet that I made and it runs off of a simple 12 volt or 18 volt Ryobi battery it has the same shape as the battery so it only goes in one way I have to put it in all the way but what I had to do in the old days is I had to then take this and tighten it down to get the power to go in and get power to come out. So, anyway, I can't get this to work. I think my switch is finally messing up. So, but what you really want is to be able to just plug it in, have it work. So, this year earlier, I found these little clips uh, through some watching somebody else's channel that I didn't know these things, how they existed or anything. And I found out this is a Ryobi clip, and this clip is on every tool that you have if you look up in there where the battery clips in, that's that piece right up in there on all of them. This is the piece you need. And it just the part that slips under the battery like this, and it's making contact to the positive and negative on the battery and gives you those two terminals to be able to draw the power from this thing. When to to be able to tap into the power that's in here. So this piece here is the key to the whole thing. I can do away with those bolts, it just will snap on and off. So I took one of George's caps that he sent me, the 3D printed ones. These things were awesome. If you want to do your own 3D printing, you can do it this way. In fact, he has since improved the file. So these pieces just clip right into it and you can use it. So if you have a 3D printer, that's great. You can do that and it'll work perfectly. Unfortunately, not everybody has a 3D printer or wants to use a 3D printer or learn to use a 3D printer. For those that don't have 3D printing capabilities, uh, there has to be a way to do it in my shop. And yes, there is. So after getting this piece, I came to realize some things about it that you now need to know. And you'll see how you can make one real easily in the shop. And the only piece you need, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the only piece you need is this little clip. And you can buy these online uh, anywhere. I, I, you, I saw a couple of sources where you can get it as cheap as a buck and a half, I think. Uh, I'll give you the number. Get your pencil and paper. And if you put that number and search on it on almost any search engine, you'll find a whole bunch of sources for this clip. And the number is 300 1044 that was hard to remember. Anyway, uh, you put that number in and this will pop up. And the number will also be in the description. So you can get it from there if you want. But this uh, part is what you need. Other than this, I, you can do it with simple material right in your own shop. 
Now, one of the things that I learned about this when I started to use it is that when you slip it on there, it only goes on so far. If I don't push it on far enough, it's not really making good contact, so you have to get it down on there a ways. Also, I noticed that if you go too far, it starts spreading these out because it starts riding up on the plastic, and they'll actually disconnect it. So there's that sweet spot in here that you want that to be at, and you can see there's a gap between the bottom of the clip and the top of the battery. That distance is what we have to pay attention to. So what I did was I discovered that distance is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So if you take some 3 sixteenths inch of plywood and have that in between, I now control the depth of how far that goes on there quickly and easily and assured that these things will be clipped into the right exact point. I used to think I had to reference back here, but I've since realized that with this clip, you want to reference where it stops from the top of the battery, not from here. So this allows that to happen. So basically what I did was I just cut out a two by two piece of three, three sixteenths plywood and I drilled two holes in there that are near the center, seven eighths of an inch apart for this thing to fit down into like so and come out. So now this fits flat against the plywood and sticks out the back side, the underside like, like that. And from there, I just fill that hole then with hot glue as much as I can and flatten it out. Don't let that hot glue build up around them because remember, the bottom of this surface has to mat, mate to here. If you put a bunch of glue in there, that'll raise it up and then it won't make contact like it should. So make sure you don't over glue it. Once you have this filled with a little bit of glue sitting down in there, then you can take and pop it down on there and you end up with something like this that I came back and glued it around the top also to help make sure that it will never come loose from this piece. Now I can take this piece and drop it on there and there's my two contacts and I have power right here easily accessed and this is just a simple plug and go type of situation to plug in which is great. So now I did make a piece of PVC pipe still to put here. I took three quarter, uh, one and a quarter inch PVC, inch and a half long, and I took and heated it up, shoved it down on there so that it would fit on there properly. That was backwards, and it fits down on there nicely. Now I will also tell you that this is a Ryobi battery. This is a black label battery, means no name, and. This is the old, old battery that all fit uh, into any Ryobi tool. So this has always remained the same, but it's not quite. If I take my adapter that just drops on there, if I put it on the new style, it fits on there. Whoops, this way. But it gets really tight as it gets near the bottom here. If I drop it on this one, the oldest one, this thing is really tight. Going and I can't I don't dare push it any further. If I do, I'll never get it off. So this is the one I would use to push this on there. That way it's looser on those. Because all you really want is the clearance. This top plate is what's lining things up for this. And this is going to be to help protect those terminals from getting touched or damaged. So when you do your PVC pipe, uh, you do want to make sure that if, if you use it, you just want to make sure that you get it so that it goes down on there easily all the way on. Uh, if I use this one here, because of the way I did this, it goes on here without any problem, but it is slightly snugger than it is on here. And I don't even want to try to put it on there, quite frankly. But this... Uh, this battery here also because it's a factory battery you'll make note that there's a little bump right here at the base on the flat side of this of this part that bump right there has to have a relief area for this to go into uh, if you look right here they have that relief area right there that is what that is for so if you're going to use just these they don't have that bump and you don't need to do that but if you're using Ryobi batteries at all, you're going to need to put that notch in there also. But this is the same shape as this, which is 
the same shape as this one. So, and that's what the bottom piece. You could use a two by two and put that on the bottom with this cut out, and that would be your two pieces that you would need with the PVC in between, all hot glued together, and you have a quick connector that you can use on here. Just like the one I made from George's 3D, you can do it this way. <coughs> Excuse me. Or from using just regular shop material, you can do it this way and still come up with a good one and not need a 3D printer to do it. So this is a good solution. If you're going to get into using battery, Ryobi batteries, to tap into those battery power for to run other types of tools and toys, uh, you're going to have to be able to make a very simple, easy receptacle so that it's no big deal to make whatever it is you're going to make. This one, the bottom plate, I actually made bigger because this is going to be the size of the box that this sets into. This is going to be a 12 volt battery charger is what it's going to be. So the battery will come in here. When I plug it into any car cigarette lighter, this thing, and then I can take my battery and drop it in there and it'll charge it off the 12 volt system and charge this battery up with no problem. So, and do it in probably about an hour and a half. It'll charge up a five amp hour battery in about an hour, about an hour and a half. So, it does a pretty good job at a very low rate. And I also eventually want to make three of these that all plug into the same cigarette lighter together so I can charge up to three batteries at one time. I believe I'll be able to do that and control the amperage so that it doesn't overload a normal 15 amp circuit on 12 volt system. And I think that'll be easy to do and still charge three batteries in under two hours. So that's the theory. That's what I'd like to be able to do. And that's what this is for. But making this, making these adapters, because there's other things out there too, like my power box. Also, if I, I'm thinking about making a quick little light for this, I have some LED, LED fixtures and this thing this ooh, and this thing I can use to make some kind of light that I can pivot to point it any direction I want and be able to pivot it so I can light up a whole large area with something one single light in this battery so I'm, I, there's lots of little things I want to make I want to make a little mini fan that you can just set anywhere where you're working and have it sit there and blowing right at you so you have this nice little fan quiet running off of this thing anyway all sorts of little toys and tools that you can make with it but making this little socket has always been the drawback for the last couple of years until I found this clip this has been a challenge to do and now as you can see I can make this adapter in less than a half hour and you make it any size you want you don't even need the PVC pipe you could put pieces of wood all the way around because this would be your guide and your clip would be the clip at the other end so that the battery would be held in there fine you don't really need the PVC pipe even if you didn't want to you just would have to have some kind of wood in here around your perimeter so that it this piece stays in alignment with this piece for your piece that for your battery to slip in so if no big deal and it's kind of amazing how easy it is this is the hard part is making the top plate and attaching this to it once you figure that out making these things will be very easy so making receptacles to be able to make all your electronic products and be able to use your Ryobi batteries other than just in your Ryobi tools it's actually kind of fun so anyway I hope this receptacle helps you in some way and lets you know that you don't have to have a lot of computer or spend a lot of money to be able to work on some some uh, electronic products or toys that run off of your Ryobi batteries so their batteries aren't just for tools anymore anyway thanks for coming by leave your comments your thoughts in the comments I do enjoy reading them if you learned something here you like this video uh, hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm kind of doing the right thing. Most importantly, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.